All right, we're back. And oh, oh, this is going to be weird. I have a different controller right now, and I don't know if it's going to be a good idea. Uh, hopefully, it's going to take a a load off of my one hand, but I don't, I don't really know. A weird sex cave. Yeah, it's a weird sex cave. See these, see these old dudes? They're just wearing a. Oh, I guess they have a weird diaper on. Uh, but mostly they're just wearing a shell and like a, a sheet. And then there's also these like weird booby bat things, which are just kind of odd. Okay, I'm gonna have to switch controllers. And so my working theory is that uh, this is actually like uh, the part of Gondolia that people know that no one wants to talk about. Uh, oh, I guess I'm stuck with this. Boy, okay. But yeah, this is the weird part of Gondolia that no one wants to talk about. Uh, and so instead, uh, instead we've been asked to come out here and, you know, actually what would, would make this easier on my hands in general, I could just turn this game onto autoplay. Uh, yeah, see? Notice how he went off to, to grab the girl? Um, but so, my, uh, my assumption is, uh, is, uh, Another one bites the My my assumption is the uh you know this is this is the part that no one wants to talk about when it comes to Gondolia. And so what they're doing uh what they've done is they've just convinced us to come out here instead uh and clean it up for them because they don't want to deal with it themselves. Cuz this place is just weird. I mean, look at that like weird bat. It's just a weird bat with like I don't I don't really fire. like it when they do that this in games where it's like, well, it's technically naked, but there's, like, nothing showing, so, like, yeah. it's technically okay, but it always just feels really strange. And, yeah, these frogs, and the the heel slimes, like, the these, the people in this cave are in, into some weird stuff. That sound effect for her choking because of poison is weird gross. But yeah, so that's that's my working theory for this cave. It's just not quite okay. But yeah, I guess if I want this game to be uh, real easy on on my hands, I just have to turn the uh, I just have to turn the the battle to full auto, and then I don't have to worry about anything. I might have to step in, but if I can just play this, like, if I can just play this, uh, one-handed and just kind of wander around, uh, and let my other hand rest, that'll help a lot, actually. Oh, right, she never actually healed herself. Magic, Serena, is it Squelch? Squelch. I think we're about to get frogged here, so, oh god, we're about to get double frogged. Sound effects are really loud. Actually, it's the voices are really loud, not the sound effects. Um, I can turn it down if you guys want me to, but effectively, uh, I was talking about this last night. The frustrating part is, effectively, character voice uh, does, is for cutscenes and battle, and it's all under one meter. So effectively, if you want the characters to be quiet, you have to turn them down for all things. I think I might actually just do that uh, and turn the voices down and just turn it up in the cutscenes. Because I can do stuff in editing uh, that'll make it easier. I just prefer it when I'm when I'm making LPs effectively to uh, preset everything, so I have to do as little editing as possible. But uh, in this case, I I don't think it's worth it. Because we pretty much had to exile Veronica from the party because she's too loud. Let's see, is there even a reason to have these auto battles? play. Uh, I wish that there was a speed mode that you could turn on. Uh, there's a number of JRPGs that have had speed modes lately, and it's so much nicer. Uh, normally I'd actually be controlling this, but I, I can't actually, uh, I can't actually, well, it's easier Victory. if I don't play right now, uh, as frustrating as that part is. Oh, right, I totally forgot about the, uh, watermark. Oop. 
Okay, so let's let's just go into the settings. I'll I'll switch it around. Uh, let's see. So we want to do system settings, volume settings. Because if you notice, it's just voices. Nothing I can do about that. Oh, right, squelch. I hate that the watermark is a thing. At least they don't require it to be, like, particularly pushy. And honestly, like, if I wanted to, I could probably get away without doing so. But I don't want to push them. Because I, I like Square Enix a lot. And, you know, I might not be a fan of all of the products they put out, but I would much prefer to have, like, a, a long-lasting working relationship with them instead of mildly antagonizing them over what I perceive as, as petty little differences. Differences? Petty little problems. And yeah, it doesn't do immersion any uh, any favors, and it's silly that they would actually request this, but oh well. Yeah, I got the game for free, best not to rock the boat. Pretty much. And like I said, it's tiny down there. I would have actually preferred it if they had sent me something like small and charming uh, to like put over it. Like I would totally have like a, a, a skin for the minimap effectively. Uh, and I guess I could actually do this myself. Oh, that's a boss. I should probably actually be ready to fight. Tactics. Tunks. Uh, follow orders. And let's switch the, uh, lineup. Because if I, if I am going to be fighting, I should probably switch Sylvando up for Veronica. Uh, I do not like the Steam controller for this. I was, I was thinking it would actually let me just do nothing. But, uh, you know, it's not actually great for this. I needed, I need a legit D-pad. I don't have one. Oh well. But yeah, those words wrapped around the minimap? Yeah, like, I could conceivably do that with some work. Uh, but what I really want would actually just be, like, a nice little graphic image. Something, something nice looking. Because you could totally have something really nice looking if you wanted... I guess I probably should have, uh, kept Veronica out of this up, up until the last second, but whatever. Okay, says... At least the enemies are weak. Well, except for maybe the poison the whole party breath, which could suck a little bit. Is that it? That actually took him out? Sweet. I do appreciate that uh, Serena and Veronica can actually, if they wanted to... Uh, let's see, not Veronica's staff. Uh, equipment. Don't I have the uh, equipment bag? Didn't I just get like a new rod? Pixie pole. Slowly restores the wielder's MP during battle. Okay, let's give that to Serena. Because, yeah, if she just has M uh, MP regen, then we can just kind of do whatever I want. Oh, that's nice. Let's see, I don't get the point of the watermark, though. Like, are people going to steal it? No, the point of the watermark is actually uh, so that everybody knows who made this game. Um, as far as I know, the, uh, the developer... The... Is it the developer or is the producer? Whatever the lead guy is on Dragon I Quest, right? I want to say is like a little bit insecure with this product. Um, and uh, as such, like when Dragon Quest Heroes first came out, uh, the when Dragon Quest Heroes first came out, the uh, the developer straight up was like, yeah, Sugiyama Kobo. I think that's it. I can't actually, I can't actually see the, uh, the copyright notice myself. It's an entirely benefit for you guys thing. Um, but he was actually doing takedowns and stuff. Which didn't make people very happy. Um, and so, that's a cool looking monster. And so, they've, they've 
since, you know, uh, recanted on a lot of things and it's not nearly so bad. Uh, is there an upper area? No, there's no upper area over there. Okay. Hello, big thing. And so now you just have to put copyrighted information and stuff like this. But, uh, I, I think he's just kind of sensitive, maybe? I don't really know. Sap, Kasap. Accelerate. Please fuddle. Let's do Kasap. These guys look like they've got pretty high defense to begin with. I have no idea if defense actually applies to magic damage. But it's probably going to make it so Eric does it, uh, a butt ton. Let's see, so no Toriyama uh, involvement? I don't actually know if they have uh, Kira Toriyama involved anymore. I think at this point, they've more or less got the uh, the design down pat, and they can make Toriyama-style things. Honestly, maybe a little bit better than Toriyama uh, at this point. I like Akira Toriyama's work. Let's just try hitting him. Let's see how much damage that does. Nah, it's better to use Sizzle. Um, Think you're tough, do you? Might as well slow them down so they attack less often. Uh... Owie. Yeah, this might be kind of tough for us. I think we'll be okay. We'll see how it goes. So Toriyama still did the character designs. He probably did the, the primary character designs more than, um... More than the, uh, than everything. Okay, so they're not... They're actually pretty, pretty hurt. We might as well function as a secondary healer for a little while. Even though Serena is by far the better healer. Let's see, Bedazzle. We do Kasap again. We'll soon have that if I remember right, there's like levels. Somebody explained that it's the severity of their defense reduction is how it works, or something like that. I don't know. Let's explode them. That doesn't do a whole lot of damage. I think this is mostly for Eric's benefit. Because he certainly does more damage with this. Character design is very obvious for some of the major villains, especially. Okay. Yeah, I haven't I haven't played enough of the uh, uh I haven't played enough of the game to really even see villains. I guess actually, yeah, the king is absolutely Dr. Giro. But that might not actually be uh that might not even be uh, Akira Toriyama, come to think of it. Because they straight up that first king you see is... is... Dr. Jiro. And, uh... And, you know, the protagonist somewhere between and Android 17? Sorry, not 18. 18 just rolls out the tongue so much better. Uh... And, uh... And Trunks. Just look at this beautiful water. It's so clear. This will be perfect for making birdsong nectar. Serena scoops up some spring water and mixes it with a few secret ingredients to make a file of birdsong nectar. There we are, all done. Now, let's head back to Gondolia and see if we can cure dear little Placido. Tunks receives the birdsong next her. Where was she just carrying that bottle around? Okay, so yeah, I'll do turbo grinding at a later date. Let's zoom. Back to Gondolia. I think maybe while we're in Gondolia, I might actually uh, switch out my controllers too. Because I tried the Steam controller and it was not a good idea. What if I could actually just play with keyboard and mouse? It almost works. Actually, almost works really well. Let me try it. Cause yeah, I can just scoot, scoot up. <gasps> Hello, that's a weird burly man mo model I haven't seen before. Gosh, look, the contest really got going while we were away. 
Oh, this is just too, too exciting. I can't wait to see the first contestant take the stage. Let's see. Let's shift things around. Listen, boys, I want front row seats for this, so let's get organized. You two go and muscle your way to the front of the crowd and save us a space. Meanwhile, me and the girls will go put a song back into little Placido's throat. Ooh, I can't wait to see his happy little face. Ciao for now. <sighs> so we get lumbered with the grunt work again, huh? Ah, uh, whatever. Let's just head over to the contest and see what's what. So, one of the other things that's kind of happened since we started, um... We started this, this series. Whoa, what the? Oh, this is strange. <laughs> I did not realize this game had a first person mode. Also, this old man, he knows what's going on. But yeah, there's, there's just a, a first person mode that I guess we can get. That's very strange. But yeah, so I've been playing CrossCode lately, and that also has a silent protagonist. And it handles it, it, handles it so much better than this game, because this game just has, like, a creepily... What the fuck? Don't want to meet that man in a back alley. Um, but it handles it so much better. No, we gotta go look... Go back and look at this guy a little bit more. Handles it so much better than uh, than this game does, because this character, I mean, okay, we gotta talk to him. <laughs> this place is full of spicy food. <laughs> I want to eat everything. All right, uh, but yeah, so like, Leah in in Crosscode, she can only say a couple of words and she emotes and stuff like that. Freaking this character, Tunks, impassive. Like, okay. I'm going to be a little bit disappointed if Tugs doesn't turn out to be, like, extremely evil. Like, his face, he could stab anybody in the party with that face, and it would be the perfect expression. It's, like, unnervingly stoic. And, like, I want... I want... I want, at least, if you're going to have a silent protagonist, have them emote. If you're if you're gonna have a character that can't speak, have them speak through their actions or their words, like Doom Guy. But this this is just weird. Like it works great if you've got a game without voice acting at all. <laughs> Santo Cielo, what an handsome pair! I think I have never seen such luscious hairs. Molto splendente. Surely you are entering la competizione, see? Si? It's a, such a waste if you not take part. Listen, Gramps, I know we're easy on the eye, but we don't have time to be. <sighs> hey, does that guy look familiar to you? <laughs> I had thought to search the town for you while the citizenry were occupied with this idiotic spectacle but no instead you choose to saunter up and greet me in broad daylight brazen fools damn it it is it's him people of gondolia listen and listen well I, Jasper, Knight of Heliodor and trusted retainer of His Majesty, King Carnelian, come before you to tell you that the very Darkspawn himself is among us. The bedeviled child who brought about the destruction of Dundrasil. This is not good. Let's get out of here. <laughs> uh. 
Come quietly, accursed one, and I may not be inclined to make you suffer. Oh, man. We've done it now. Oh, we're fighting them. All right, round two, three. Oh. Oh, God. Never mind. Keyboard and mouse is even more of a mistake. You have to use the arrow keys to control things. That's stupid. All right, these guys hurt. Uh, I should probably have healed before I started this. All right, anyway, I guess I'm heal bot. Nice to meet you. Uh, no. Oops. Press the A button. Whatever. We'll be okay. I'll just let Eric fight things and I'll just heal. Luckily, these guys don't hit that hard, but still. But Eric is kind of our, our go-to hit everybody with everything. Now, we are... we're pepped up, but I don't think that's really gonna help us that much. Uh, oh! It even tells me how much HP it'll restore. Wow. Okay. Yeah, regular heal is kind of garbage. Actually, I'm not even sure. No, that's the baseline level without the uh, any of the extra effects. Please don't hit Eric anymore. I have to heal him. Luckily, he comes with free healing. Also that. Seems like the kind of fight where uh, someone needs to rescue you. I'm not sure. These guys... So what pet powers do we have? Real decoy? No. And this is only one enemy, too. Which makes this harder. Well. I might as well heal Eric just in case they ace him. Because that get bad. I'm just going to let Eric just continually uh, wail on everybody with his double boomerang setup. Which is ridiculously helpful, mind you. Yeah, I don't think we need rescue. I think we got this. The fact that the main character is an all-rounder helps a lot. Like, I'm usually kind of grumpy, and I wish there was more character customization than this. But I have to give it credit. Uh, he's a solid combatant. Uh, oh, I hate the fact that enemies can crit me. I appreciate it, because it feels fair. But it sucks a little bit. We'll be fine. But it does just mean that I'm sitting here defending, uh, defending, uh, just healing with tunks as Eric handles everything. I think they need rescuing. Pretty much. Watch us be losing when the, uh, when the cutscene resumes. The enemies can get pepped up. I actually didn't know that. That's a new one. Alright. No. I counter your pep with the power of our double pep! Pep! Yeah, I do wild side, but you need three party members to actually do wild side. Damn it. They just keep coming. Your pathetic resistance will get you nowhere. Yield and spare us the Yield? I don't think so, honey. <clears throat> You leave my friends alone, or I'm going to have to teach you a lesson. Yeah! Honey. Who are these imbeciles? And how did they get past the guards? <gasps> imbeciles, you say? We'll soon see who's the stupid one! <laughs> 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 so you have friends, Darkspawn. Not for long. Fan out, men. <laughs> Psst. This way, quickly.
What are you doing? I bought you some time. Use it. Get out of here, now! <laughs> you know, purple energy ball generally really does mean bad guy. Well, I think we found the actual dark spawn. Looks like we're safe for now. We were lucky to get out of there, you know? But... we didn't all make it out. Poor Eric, he... Oh, I can't imagine what they'll do to him. Oh, don't worry, sweetie. Eric's tougher than he looks. I think. That Jasper was talking some nonsense, though, huh? I mean... Why call the one who's trying to beat the Dark One, the Dark Spawn? Honey, that's just confusing. He isn't really the Dark Spawn. That's just what the King of Heliodor thinks. It's all some terrible misunderstanding. I'm ever so sorry, Silvando. We should have explained all this to you earlier, but, well, so much has been going on. Oh, please, there's no need to apologize, darling. Darkspawn, indeed. As if a lovely little thing like you would go around with someone like that. Oh, Silvando. Now, are we gonna stand around here all night, or are we gonna take action, huh? I'm a little bit disappointed Silvando's not the main character. Like, okay, delete Tunks from the game, or delete Tunks' personality, which takes, like, no effort or time, and just take per Silvando's personality and just give it to Tux. Like, the freaking... He's the main character! I I know he's incredibly flamboyant and super sassy, but like... Every time Sylvando speaks, it's like, I'm down with this. I like this guy, he's got a plan, he's very confident, whatever. Tux, every time he opens his mouth, nothing happens. Let's sneak up to that bridge in the middle of town and see if we can spot where they're keeping Eric. Be quiet as mice now, and use the buildings for cover. The streets are crawling with soldiers. In fact, let's see if we can get up onto the rooftops through the inn. That might be the best route to the bridge. Can we fight the guys? Hello! Battle! Just wait until you see what Silvando does in Act 2. Won't say more than that. I am looking forward to this. But like, I don't know. I... I just like... I I appreciate the desire for tradition with with uh, silent main characters. But the more character you give the side characters to compensate, the more it becomes painfully obvious how uninteresting the main character is as a result. It's worse or better, depending on opinion. Huh. Eh, we'll see. I... I am... I'm just like... We did it, darlings! <sighs> I like, uh... Oh, right. We should, we should change some tactics here. Seeing as we're not in, in boss fights. Okay, everyone to, uh, fight wisely. Perfect. Now we can just sit back and, uh, let it happen. I like it how Serena kind of looks like the fairy chore mother. Like, she, she's got the pot lid and, like, the fairy wand. It looks like she was honestly pulled away from making dinner, uh, to help, uh, gank some fools. But yeah, I, I know, I know it would bug some people, and I, I know Silvando probably bugs people. But like, he's just such a joy to listen to. It was like, Eric is. I think Eric spends too much time actually talking to the main character, and Silvando, on the other hand, almost completely ignores him. 
Hello, guardsmen. You were looking for me. Well, I was looking for you. Oh, you are on your own. Well, sir, have you ever dealt with a clown, a mute, uh, a dwarf with a, a fire stick and a, and the the fairy cook mother? Well, then, in a you're in for a bad day. Excuse me, are there any other guards around here that wants wants to make the mistake of running into me? I guess this man had some initiative, and I was maybe blind. I did not roll very high on my perception check, but that's okay. I can just wander off and, you know, stand over wherever the heck I want. Seems like a good way to grind for levels. Oh yeah, uh, these guys are not very strong, but then again, like, this game is not very hard. I, honestly, I might actually load up, uh, if my hand's gonna be, like, messed up. I might just uh, do a day where I just load up some old Dragon Quest games and we can just play like a little, the, little bit of them. Um, yeah, they're not the greatest EXP, but that's fine. Awarded for defeating 700 monsters. Oh, yay. Hello, Godsman. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? I I really wish games would actually recognize my efforts in, in things like this. Like, just once I want to play a game like this where... If you kill all the enemies fast enough, or you, if you eliminate all the enemies beforehand, when it comes to fighting the the evil boss knight guy, whatever his name is, I've totally forgotten. He's like, you know, get the men, and you just see a field of bodies behind them. Holy crap, that hurt. Uh, but you know, just a, a field of, uh, of victims that I have left in my wake. I would be so happy for a game to do that, Did just do once. Right? And I, I honestly can't think of any games that really do that. There's, there's a couple of exam, uh, there's a couple of like standouts that I know of. Metal Gear Solid 3, if you don't kill a single person for the most part, uh, there's one boss fight against the Sorrow, uh, where you just walk down a river. Whereas, like, normally, uh, you actually have to, like, avoid ghosts and, like, all sorts of stuff. And that's really cool. Uh, whereas, uh... You know... Yeah, if you don't kill anyone, it's just this pleasant walk down a river. I think you have to kill maybe one person throughout the entire game, and otherwise it's just, like... And awkward and, like, silly looking. And it, it makes me want more games to, like recognize when you've, like, depopulated the entire population of guards. Because that would be so funny! It's just like, uh, you know, you'll never get past my men, and you just see, like, a mound of people just stacked on the ground, moaning, and, like, the villain guy's like, ah, uh, oh, this is not the script. Oh, no. Yeah, in Undertale, if you kill everyone, you get the true final boss, Sans. It was just true. I saw Bird trying to beat him, and oh boy, that did not look easy. And I appreciate that. I I really appreciate. I I know Undertale gets a lot of like the from people, but I the fact that you could go true pacifist, uh, and you know full genocide, and actually like have them be almost completely distinct playthroughs was incredible. Goodness. I don't think I've, um... I, I don't think I've seen another game really do do anything even remotely close to that. Sorry, I'm putting on my brace. And, like, I have to give them mad props for what they've done. Um... Yeah, I do know that if you're, uh, real good at bullet hells, the Sans fight is very easy. Uh, I, I've seen... I've seen a couple of people do it that are, like, have had a lot of practice with bullet hells, and it was just like, man, this is... This really does look like child's play. I'm bad at bullet hells. Like, I like... I like games like Jamestown and stuff, but they're just too much for me. I prefer kind of the, the mid-tier easy ones, as opposed to, like, some of the really ridiculous stuff. Ooh. <sighs> I did get really into, uh, Steridin for a while, which is really fun. Did I do all right? Currently playing Gungeon, the first boss always gets me. I am bad at Gungeon. I am not 
I did- I've beaten the dragon twice now. I think that's good enough. I- I'd like to go back and play more of it, but it's hell on the hands, so, eh.